Anyway, uh, so in the beginning of the disc, there's this song that plays. I'm sorry, there's a song that plays in the very beginning of every episode. It's just louder than anything else that goes on in the entire show. So as you're watching it, you would lower it for the beginning and then watch the rest of the. You would increase the volume to watch the rest of the show. I fell asleep. So throughout the night, you would just hear straying. <laughs> It just blasted <laughs> into the apartment. <laughs> Brian started going around the apartment at one point in time just going, Stray! <laughs> All right, are we ready? I know I've said that four times, but I think it's finally time to start this fucking shit show. Wait, so wait, 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 wait. Yeah, let's go. Clank, clank, clank. Clank, clank. Clank, clank. Clank, 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 clank. with audio distortion slash audio issues. Hello, and welcome to Strange Happy Hour. I am one of your hosts, Brent the Jesterhead Metcalf, along to my right. To my right. Hey, it's the job. There we go. And on to the left. He forgot and didn't play it off. Really well done. <laughs> on to the left. The dispatcher, Mark Plover. Uh, and of course, we are here each and every week to talk with you about the very cool tech news and very nerdy video game news that comes out of there. If I sound a little off or odd or even a little bit loud, it's because my mic is not working. My mic is right here and it sucks right now. So took a poop it's going back over there. And I'm using the handy dandy mic inside of this Logitech camera because uh, I have no backup mic. So please endure, uh, specifically you audio podcast listeners, because the video podcast, you can at least watch my lips move. And the like YouTube does those automatic subtitles. It's really cool. They're mostly broken and they don't work very well. It's mm. great. But uh, of course, we do have time to talk with you about what happened this week, but we don't have time to talk to you about everything. We, of course, cannot go over the entirety of IGN's partnership with comic-con for comic-con at home it is a very large story and quite frankly full of fluff that i didn't think was very interesting but we have some links that you can look at if you find that interesting we also don't have time to discuss the fact that ubisoft has uh, canceled a king arthur game because of an ex-executive the same executive who was uh fired for various sexual harassment allegations and we do not have time to discuss the fact that halo infinite supports two-player local four-player online campaign play however we do have time to talk about what uh we like to call on this very show each and every week as we gather together in our quarantine bunkers as one under the umbrella of strange gaming and happy hour what we deem on this very show Josh the important. Himself. The important. The important. There we go. Oh my God, we did so well. We we're so good. So good. I think I uh, would like to talk first with the dispatcher himself because we have a very interesting story from Apple, which makes sense when you spell it out. But man, is it fucked up. So let's discuss yeah. it. <laughs> so, so actually, uh, I take the opposite stance on this. Hmm. You would. <laughs> Um, so, uh, we've, we've heard a lot and we've talked a lot anyway in the past about, uh, some of the antitrust issues, of course, that Apple's been facing lately. Um, Google as well actually was, was fined twice in a row, once for antitrust issues and once for another issue anyway by the EU specifically. Um, and they were kind of used as a, a, a poster child anyway of, 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 it's not really, the, I guess it's an example. They were made an example of anyway of, of companies. Um, with antitrust issues that the EU deemed anyway, uh, where large fines were imposed against, you know, these multinational companies. So, <clears throat> ClassPass uh, is a, a company that runs an app uh, on iPhone, um, and I don't know if they run on Android or not, that didn't spe they didn't specify. Um, I'll do some digging. But uh, they uh, specifically were working uh, before coronavirus hit uh, about booking classes in gyms uh, for exercise and that kind of thing. Um, so when coronavirus hit and all the gyms had to close down, they had to pivot. Um, and their pivoting was to go to an online platform to facilitate the gym membership or, you know, like continuing your gym classes and at home techniques and routines and whatnot. Um, to help keep the gyms afloat, help keep themselves afloat, of course, and help keep people active, and that's that's their whole point. Uh, well, once they sort of move to an experience platform, um, is is the title that Apple's using here. 
Uh, Apple came to them and said, hey, by the way, now that you've pivoted to this, you have a month to comply uh, where your membership fees now have to give us a 30% cut. Um, and of course, yes. Apple, of course, didn't describe this in the best way, but it's not re- there really isn't a better way to describe this of why they came to them and said that they had to give this up. But uh, essentially, uh, Apple has a clause in their terms and conditions of hosting an app on the on the App Store to uh, to use on the iPhone, um, where if it's an experience or if it's a subscription model is made that Apple is to take 30% of the cut of that revenue. Um, now that's a hard, that's, that's a hard, uh, that's a hard bolt to bite, you know, for, for a lot of companies, 30% is a good chunk. I um, do it every week on my paychecks. Yep. <laughs> but, um, well, on top of the tax that's already collected for that payment, um, yeah. you know, it, like you, you now have to give Apple over 30% of what would have been your revenue from that in the first place. Now, what the way that Apple cited this, because obviously they've been approached by news outlets and whatnot, and their their PR team specifically mitigated this by saying, you know, look, this is the way we handle every application. This is not new. You know, like we we understand that you know moving coronavirus, you know, moving with the coronavirus anyway to a, a, a non IRL setup requires a lot of apps to have to pivot to this kind of platform. But this is a decade old rule that they've had in their terms and conditions. Um, you know, we've never changed rules before. Yeah, but no, nope, never once, or made exceptions. Yeah, no, no, not at all. Well, but the, specifically, they were doing it because they said it would be unfair to the many apps that have already had to pay oh. a thirty percent platform, a thirty percent, you know, like fee that, that every other app had to pay the thirty oh, percent fee. Um, so. Now this well, is ahead, finish, this sure. is this is part of where Apple makes a good chunk of their money too is of course in residual funds anyway of apps that are hosted on the Play Store. Um, now this thirty percent also gets cut out from paid apps, for example, that you purchase. They take thirty percent of the cut there, and that's considered their finder's fee, quote unquote, or their hosting fee, quote unquote, for you know keeping the app around on the App Store. Now the antitrust portion of this is that you have to download this app from the App Store. There is no other option here. There's the whole reason why Fortnite, for example, um, and it was kind of a big move because they were such a high-profile app at that point, where Fortnite straight up said, we're just not going to offer an iPhone version and uh, Mm -hmm. the Google Play version because we can offer it self-hosted. Google Play allows you to sideload apps and bypass the Play Store. Um, And that's that's an Android feature. It's not like you have to hack the phone or anything. Um, so they decided to go to that and build out their own store for updating the game and being able to play the game there. Um, but I, I understand their point of, like, we don't want you to take 30% of our profits here. But the problem is, is that's the that's the Apple tax of using the Apple platform. If yeah, you don't I'm sure, like the, I'm it, sure the, uh, the peasants thought the same thing when the king took his tax, too. So what my question is, is, like, when we're talking about fairness... Like, if we could find some way around the rules, then it would be fine. Like, say, for instance, uh, the, the, that internet browser that blocks pop-ups and stuff, uh, Brave, Brave, I think yeah. is what it's called, right? What if they created an app specifically for that and a marketplace that they could literally download through there to download an app onto Brave? They could bypass Apple, right? Uh, yeah, but uh, Apple's also got continu- uh, contingencies built in that you can't have app stores like that like that's that you can't have an app store or an, an app of app stores or well, that technically store. brave would block them from knowing that right no, no i mean you have to i mean that's the thing if you want to have an app that can officially be installed from the app store in the first place it has to go through apple's review process and apple actually looks at your source code they understand what the app does they test it they they thoroughly go through it that's also a reason why the apple developer license costs a hundred dollars a year Mm, yeah, I would just throw away my iPhone. I would say, everybody, just go buy an Android. <laughs> See, but th- this is the reason why I don't agree with this. Like, I don't agree with this I, this idea that this is an antitrust issue. This is part of the Apple ecosystem. If you don't like it, go somewhere else. You know, like, if you don't like or, the fact that, that if, you don't like the, if you don't like the fact that Microsoft Office is only available on Windows and Mac, don't get a Linux. You know, don't people get a Linux have a problem like that PlayStation games are only on PlayStation, so that's bullshit. <laughs> Well, like, like, but, a- but see, but see that to me, that's the same principle. Like you, you could technically say that, you know, 
PS5 exclusive games are then considered antitrust because I can't play them on PC and Xbox. You know, like like I, I hate this argument of, oh no, I don't like this because this platform has a no. Different it's not setup. that you couldn't play it. That that's just uh, they have their own. It's their company that made it, whereas Apple didn't make this app and is keeping it from Android. Not necess- They're not keeping it from Android. Nothing's well, nothing's keeping them from, if, from going to Android like, and being an Android exclusive. I mean, we have this game and we're selling it to them for forty five dollars because they're going to tax us thirty percent. And over on Xbox, it's going to only be thirty dollars. They could raise their prices theoretically. You're yeah. right. That, that that would be a solution to do. You could also do what um, what Netflix has done. So I just found an article. It's from. Uh, PCMagazine.com, and it looks like starting in 2019, they Netflix basically took the option away to pay via iTunes. So mm-hmm. if you take that payment method away, you could still have a Netflix subscription. You could download the app, but because you're not paying through iTunes, they no longer pay the Apple tax. Yeah, basically you're not paying in-app. What you're doing is you're paying via the website now. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that was a decision that a lot of companies made a while back because if you register and do that subscription through whatever platform you're on, because, like, like, for example, uh, a lot of the Strange Gaming streamers, I'm subscribed to them, but I had subscribed at one point through the Android Twitch app. Now, Twitch doesn't mm-hmm. care because, you know, they collect revenue off of it no matter what. The streamer is the one who ultimately gets hurt, and I found this out later and had to fix it. But um, if I registered through... Google Play, or if I subscribed on Twitch to a streamer through Google Play, it was considered a Google Play subscription. Mm -hmm. So Google took their cut, Twitch takes their cut, and then whatever's left over from that goes to the streamer. Okay, Um, yeah. So what I had to do is cancel the subscription on Google Play, go to Twitch's website, and resubscribe. Yeah. So for some numbers here, uh, Netflix earned an average of $2.4 million per day through iOS last year. So that'd be 2018, Mm -hmm. because this is an article about 2019, which meant Apple's cut was between $350,000 to $700,000 per day, depending on how many of the subscriptions had fallen to the 15% tier. Mm -hmm. Trillion dollar Uh, company. Uh, Yeah, the the problem is is that ClassPass here is also a small enough app that they fall into the higher percentage tier. Mm -hmm. Once you hit a Mm -hmm. certain mass or a certain number of subscriptions, that's when you'd actually drop down to a lower level tier, especially whenever you start getting up. Like like, uh, Twitch does the same thing too. If you have a certain number of viewers or a certain number of subscribers, they take, uh, starting with, I I think it's a a 10% cut, and then they slowly degrade it down to 5% or something like that. Uh, YouTube does the same thing too. The CPM that you get is actually based on the number of views that you get. It actually goes up, ironically, um, for the higher number of views that you have, because it's almost guaranteed that you're going to continue to make money if you or keep posting videos and making more money for them as an advertising platform if you keep making more videos with an anticipated higher CPM. Apple reported app developer earnings reaching $120 billion in January of 2019, 11 it. years into the App Store's existence. $34 billion come from 2018 alone. So the total ins- is $120 billion. Wait, is that a year or a month? The total, $120 billion uh, oh, oh, for oh, the oh, year sorry. of 2018, 40, $34 yeah. billion. They are 25% of that. Yeah. One year. So it... it I... I'm taking the emotion out of it, Mark, you are correct, right? Your your argument is valid. I completely understand. They signed the dotted How, line. They know what they're getting into, or they're supposed to. How, however, I still stand by what John and I were saying as well, which is at some the point police. in time, <laughs> fuck the police. No, <laughs> at some point in time, there has to be a discussion about you know maybe not changing like bending the rule, but like figuring out a better system, right? You're talking about tiers. There's got to be a better solution here, especially when we're talking about the fact that businesses are trying to survive and moving to models that they're not even sure are going to work, right? Like, yeah. ClassPass can't guarantee they're even going to make the revenue necessary to carry on this business model. Well, and so they're, they're, uh, based on what they're talking about, it almost sounds... Uh, now, I, again, I'm inferring this because this is what the article... Uh, the art, the, this is the way that the article's worded, but it sounds like in the, in the midst of this, in this conversion... First off, this wasn't a problem for Apple before. Mm-hmm. COVID. So whatever they were doing as far as the subscription model and whatnot beforehand, whether it was a free app or whatever, wasn't there. Like, it wasn't revenue that was present before. Yeah. It sounds like this is new revenue of a different form that was coming into play here. Now, whether it was more or less the same, whatever, it doesn't specify that kind of thing. But 
like you're kind of stepping into new territory here. And, and my assumption here, of course, this being a much more involved platform now, is that their costs or the revenue have probably gone up a little bit from this. Because well, before it, it was just a thing of like, you want to get paired with a teacher, that kind of thing. And, and, and that's, that's basically what, what the, my understanding of, of the, the application is, of course. But So I actually think what it is is that this is the, the model they had was available, holy crap, since 2016. I'm seeing an article, or, you know, October 19th, 2016, is this model sustainable? $30 gets you 30 classes. The difference here is that you would pay that once and then go to the physical classes, and then from there you would not use ClassPass, you'd sign up with those classes, right? He, I think with COVID, they got a spike in subscribers, and it's now all digital, so you can't go anywhere. You have to use ClassPass as your vehicle to get this stuff. Yeah. Which sounds to me like their revenue probably went up from this as a result. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, it, you know, my, my thing is, is that you're you're making more money. You have to pay the tax to be able to make that more money in a new platform or step into a new space. Like there, there's new challenges, you know, stepping into a new market space. I just um, feel like it, it just feels so dirty that, you know, yeah. granted, like I, I'm I'm more of a I, I am for free market. But at the same time, I feel like there's an obvious advantage when you have a person who owns the entirety of not only a platform but like the total control of it it just like it makes me want to buy apple less and less and less every year and i've but, been doing that i mean the last computer i bought was not an apple product and yeah. um it's you know for a trillion dollar company they didn't get there from being stupid so mm -hmm. um I feel like, you know, you know what you get into when you signed up for it and you did your thing. But, you know, as consumers, we should also be thinking about how, like, okay, I want to, I don't want to give someone else my money. So I'm going to funnel it this way after yeah. at least using Apple for a short period of time saying, hey, go through this portal to do this, 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 and this, and people will do it. Yeah. I mean, so, so the, the alternative here, of course, is don't, just don't straight up offer, you know, your, your platform or, or don't offer the experience part of this platform, which is where, which is what Apple specifically was citing as part of the subscription that needs to go to them for the cut. Now, no, actually, they can do exactly what Netflix has, which is you can't sign up for the experience right. part in the app on an iPhone. Right. So if you have Netflix on iPhone and you try to sign up for a brand new account, it will not allow you. It's telling you you have to go to the web browser right. and from there you're able to sign up for the experience. Right. They could do that. I mean, or, and, they've, and they've, get, they've been given plenty of time to do that. Apple gave them till the end of the year to comply. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. End of the year, end of the month. I thought you said end of the month earlier. So end of the month was the initial statement when all of this went public, of course. that That's when Apple, I guess, then, backtracked a little bit and said, all right, oh, fine, so look, we'll give you to the end of the year, you know. So they made an exception. No, it won't, Interesting. <laughs> well, not only that, but they also it also makes them feel like maybe we are in the wrong. And it's like, if you're not in the wrong, hold them down to the fire, and that's what you're supposed to do, right? No, it's that's the, your it's business not about, model. It's not about being in the wrong. For them, it's it'll be more a hassle to get the bad PR. Yeah. We could literally eat whatever small amount of revenue we would earn from well, this. Yeah, class that's my point. Obviously not making enough. And I, you know, I they, instead of t you know just take out that fire rod that rod out of the fireplace and just you know brand them with the Apple thing, and like, we own you now. That's what it feels like to me anyway. But I, I don't know my my thing here, and and you know I've already said it before is, is yes of course they made some exception here of course where the initial notice was end of the month now it's end of the year kind of thing. Uh, I still don't, again, I, I don't believe Apple's in the wrong here. I believe that any kind of antitrust pushing that, that the EU or US might try to push on them for this is an easy yeah. defense of, look, this is the way that we do business. It's a closed mm -hmm. ecosystem. If you don't like it, go to another platform. Android and Amazon have open platforms, feel free. You know, yeah. but, but if you want the, the availability of our customers, the high volume of customers that we have that actually spend money on applications and, and, and are willing to pay for things, you come here and you pay our, ta you, you have to deal with our taxes. Like that, yeah, there's definitely no legal ramification here. It's no, just a no. moral justification. Right. Where, it's, where it's, do you feel comfortable? It, it's strictly a PR thing of doing this right now, for example, is bringing out everybody's opinions about it. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. you know, and, and making, because Apple is a lifestyle brand, this will inevitably have, you know, whatever, uh, you know, a tenth or a hundredth of a percent of people going, hmm, maybe I shouldn't support this quite as much, but, you know, well, I, the majority of people I, aren't going to care, and there are a lot of people who even hear about it that, you know, will be like, okay, fine, whatever, you know, I get it, so... I mean, I, I honestly think the easiest solution for class pass is to follow the route of Pandora and all these others. Like Pandora, Deezer, YouTube Music, SoundCloud, Tidal, and Napster provide services for nine 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 a month. However, they charge twelve nine nine a month for purchases through iTunes and iOS. Okay. Like yeah. that's what I would do. It's it's the easiest solution. It keeps you on that platform and you're guaranteed to get the money that you need. You may lose a, a like a handful, a percentage of subscribers. I won't say a handful, but like Arguably, you get to retain the well, money after the Apple tax. But, it, but even then, like you tell them, you pay with Apple Pay, and this is the price. Yeah. You pay on the website through PayPal or something else, this is yep. the price. Yeah, and if people keep advertising, everything is more expensive on Apple. People are just mm -hmm. going to stop by and be like, you did this to yourself. Don't care. And eventually, everybody's going to want to start going away from Apple. I mean, yeah. it, you speak with your wallet. You know, as Brent loves yeah, to tell everybody. 100%. Uh, I, I don't disagree with this. I, I understand that this is Apple's platform, and I enjoy the convenience somewhat of Apple's products. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm not putting my money elsewhere. I, I enjoy this so much, so far. So, Nerd. Please yeah. let us know what you think about yeah, Apple's 30% tax. What do you think of this situation with ClassPass? Do you disagree? Do you morally fall into an area? Do you, like, from a legal standpoint, think that there's something that could be done? Let us know in the comments floating directly where my mic would be. Like, right here is where the comment section is. Because <laughs> my mic that. normally is right here. I'll accept that one. <laughs> Maybe it'll improve the audio quality. Oh, Time to move snap. on to uh, Handsome John. We're going to talk about a little bit of samurai time on the PlayStation. What's going on? I've been having a great time with Ghost of Tsushima. It has been, it is just, God, it's so, it just scratches all the itches. It feels so good. Mark today was like, hey, we can't start recording until <laughs> like 6.30. And I was like, that means two hours of Ghost of Tsushima. And I hit a fucking stride, baby. I was like, let me parry, block, kill, kill, kill. Let's do this. That game is so beautiful. <laughs> and uh, I've, I've enjoyed every second of it. But the cool thing is, is that it's actually one of the, it's top selling on PS4 and it's an exclusive I, IP for Sony. It sold $2.4 million in just three days. Mm -hmm. Now, to give you some perspective on some some of the other IS, uh, IPs that Sony has done, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn was about $2.6 million for the first week. Uh, Spider-Man was $3.3 million in the first three days. God of War was $3.1 million. And The Last of Us was $4 million, top in the charts for Sony in just three days. That is the power of IPs yeah. and having first party, good first party exclusives and what they could do for your, not only your console, but software sales in general. It, it, it just, it brings about why I am, fell in love with Sony. Every single one of those games, I have platinumed except for Ghost of Tsushima, which I'm going to. Yeah, I'm on my way through that as well. It's also interesting to note, I don't have the article here. I'll try and find it before we put up our typical Google Doc description stuff. Uh, but this is the highest selling like uh, Sony property that's made by a Western studio in Japan. Mm -hmm. So like most of the time, uh, I think God of War sold like 150,000 units in its first week. Ghost of Tsushima is well over 250,000. Like that's a really big jump. Japan's population is rather small in the larger scheme of things. So we talk about sales. It's almost always in 100,000 units. Very rarely is it millions unless you're talking about Pokemon or Dragon yeah. Quest. Like those two alone are usually the millions. The rest well, of them are Well-established usually... names over there. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, exactly, like having a brand new IP from a Western studio, 250,000 within that first week is, is pretty phenomenal. And you can see it on Japanese social media all over the place. On Twitter, they are constantly talking about this game and they're really happy about it. To the point where we talked last week about Tsushima, you know, the tourist uh, tourism department of Tsushima actually partnering with Sucker Punch to like showcase parts of the game and also like, hey, here's a locale that you saw in the game. You can come and see it in real life. Those kinds of things. So, brilliant. Just absolutely yeah. brilliant. And uh, it, it, the it, the conversation around the game, which we'll talk about later uh, in a new story, that is also really interesting about what 
the game is and what actual you know samurais were to japan is also very interesting so uh definitely check that out when we talk about it later um yep. the the sales though are what gets because you have to remember horizon ended up selling 10 million 10 million copies total and yep. that's on the low end compared to i think god of war and spider-man and definitely the last of us i think will break 10 million copies yeah, but when you're selling what 4.2 is what you said in the first three days yeah it was yeah. It, it just shattered all <laughs> any and all records so you have to remember like it's only been getting better too start off with horizon at 2.6 and then got award 3.1 spider-man 3.3 and then tutorloo came in and just freaking broke the glass house mm -hmm. it was just yeah, it's just been a great, great generation for Sony, and I hope Xbox is seeing this, and I really want them to learn their lesson, because I don't want Xbox to go away. There are things about Xbox that I do love, but they need to understand what's what Sony is doing and why it works, and I think that we will see the properties that Xbox has do better, which I want to see. I want to see another Gears of War. I do want to see a good Halo game come out. Like Fable. Yeah, would love Fable. Fable to come out swinging. Yeah, and we have people who haven't played very many games in during this generation would drop what they're doing to buy Fable because they loved that franchise so much. And yeah, uh, good. I was just gonna say you brought up Xbox, and I think what's super fascinating about it is I hear a lot of conversation about people who who either purchase an Xbox or even like like John and I are doing, which is using our PC. Uh, with Game Pass to play because Game Pass is an incredible deal. Like I, I, I feel yep. like we, we talked about Xbox last week, and I, I do feel like we kind of downplayed it a little bit. But Game Pass is incredible for the consumer, truly a big highlight. But the caveat here is that people still buy their PS4 even if it's just an exclusive machine, right? Yep. Like people literally are like, I will spend. $400 on a console and then $60 per game to play what Sony's putting out because it's worth the money. Yeah. I haven't bought an Xbox console in uh, ever. Like yeah. the, the two I owned were gifts and I barely played them. So yeah. if you want to take that conversation and really carry it, yes, you have to invest in your IP enough to justify, hey, not only is Game Pass an incredible deal, but there's so many good games on here. I literally don't have time to even touch PlayStation. I mean, so I was hey. an Xbox fanboy in the 360 era, and I ended up buying a, th a PS3 late in the generation because of for the infamous. games that they had for Infamous. <laughs> like, I mean, it, it was Infamous 2, to be specific. But it was... These are the things that drive console sales. And I know Xbox, you know, regardless of what Spencer says, oh, we're not worried about it. I'm like, yeah, you are. You want to sell these things. You didn't make these things not to sell them. You're not doing this because you don't want people just to play games. You want to make money. You want to be profitable. This is still a company. We get that. But right now, I don't think Xbox has the vision that Sony does. And mm -hmm. it's very apparent that Sony has had the long stride game in mind. This entire time, since the very end of PS2, they knew what they wanted to do. They knew yeah. to keep going with these first-party studios. The, you know, uh, picking up Insomniac Games was an obvious choice. I'm surprised they honestly didn't do it earlier. I don't... Yeah. It blew me away. And honestly, I think that was probably more on Insomniac's part than it was Sony's. I was going to say. But... It's very possible that... And so I mean, I just didn't want to. I mean, Ted Price for years said we love being independent for X, Y, Z reasons. So. But we're just going to keep Ratchet and Clank exclusive yeah. and you're going to love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sony makes those deals where if you develop a game that's like an exclusive IP, they own that IP for the most part, right? Mm -hmm. So Sony technically owns Ratchet and Clank. Insomniacs is just the typical developer because they know how to fucking make a banger of a franchise. I freaking love Ratchet and Clank. So like the, the home food. We, get in there, Mark. We, you got you to be careful. That that's that might be considered antitrust. Okay. Oh. <laughs> no. Um, now, actually, uh, 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 the point I was going to throw in a little bit ago was, uh, you know, you got to be you got to be careful though. Microsoft might be making a break on the scene because you know, Lord Gaben himself actually endorsed Xbox a little bit. So ago. dumb. Come <laughs> on. Why is, get well, out that of here. That blew up all over Twitter. I'm like, why is this blowing up? I don't understand. <laughs> well, I think my favorite comment was someone was like, "You realize that Gabe Newell worked for Microsoft for ten years? Then <laughs> here's some other breaking news: Sean Layden endorses PS5. <laughs> Come on." 
Yeah. Well, I think my favorite part is when he's asked on the interview why. He's like, it's obvious. Yeah. And then just, that's the end yeah, of no, it. That's, that's it. That's it. Cool. I love it. All it's right, whatever. <laughs> Didn't you it know? It holds no weight at all. <laughs> oh, man. But anyways, yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I'm blown away at this game because it was it was definitely something that sat on the back burner for my radar. Like, even yeah. starting it, I wasn't crazy about it. I'm getting it. I feel it now. I understand why it's so great. I, I love the fact that we live in a time right now where a Western studio can pay enough respect to a culture that it is openly endorsed and accepted and they love it mm -hmm. and there's no controversy. Like 2020 is the high point of controversy. It feels like everything yeah. is a touch point and I'm not trying to belittle anybody's feelings, but it's just, it's a lot to take in when it, every little thing just blows up into something. Everybody right? like, used their controversy tank and emptied it on Tootaloo 2. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> They're so like, I'm exhausted. I can't even go here with Tsushima. <laughs> just take it. Just take it. Uh, but it's, it is really, really cool to watch, like, Japanese players just come out and go, this game's incredible. Like, this is what I love about it. You know, uh, I imagine if Assassin's Creed Creed 2 came out today, or in a time in which Twitter was incredibly prevalent, that you'd see something similar from, like, Italian people. Like, it is, it's, I like that a lot. And I, I love that this is going somewhere. I want Sucker Punch to do more with this. If, even if it's not necessarily um, this character, this world, like, they've once again proven they know how to handle game design, and I would love for them just to continue on, so... You know, it's Very funny, cool. it's like, cool. regardless if they made, like, the women completely, like, you know, they're, they look normal, they're proportionate, or they give them giant boobs. Like, that's video games, but don't worry, people would get mad about that. Asian people yeah. don't have big boobs. <laughs> that would have been an easy one, but it's Who just was it? Alana, Alana Pierce was talking about one of her favorite video game characters, because asking on Twitter, if you don't know who Alana Pierce is, she's uh, someone who used to work for IGN, she now works at Fun House. She's great, you should follow her. Yeah well worth opinions she knows her shit on video games and yeah, somebody was asking around on twitter like what's your favorite video game character he's like she she replied like honestly this is not the correct response because i know so many people are going to be fucking upset about it but um what is this character's name ninja gaiden uh female ninja uh oh um yeah i can't to, fucking uh, remember her name man she was on the uh playstation all-stars was she? I think so. Ayane. Ayane is her name. Um, and she's like, I feel like this is not the proper, proper From Heavenly answer. Sword, right? Um, no. Oh, it's not Heavenly Sword. Ninja Gaiden. And, and it's Ayane, Ayane. And Ayane is like a very well-endowed <laughs> female character. <laughs> yeah. uh, she's like, but her growth is incredible. Like, despite the character her model. Her growth like, was she's, incredible. Her, her growth's incredible, and, like, she has this whole arc, and it's really cool, and, like, you really can't judge a book by cover, and that goes both ways. Like, you can't sit here and say, oh, you, we should value character development and storytelling in video games, but fuck that bitch because her tits are too big. <laughs> and, like, it doesn't work that way, and so it is interesting to watch. It, it's just funny listening grow. to the stuff that people complain about with video games. I'm like, the whole point is this is supposed to be fun. So, like, unless it takes away from the fun, I don't see why you should even argue. Yeah, there's a whole other thing, too, in the industry going on right now, which isn't exclusive video games. It's happening in cartoons as well, but about voice acting and how that works. And, you know, oh, a yeah. lot of people appreciate the medium because of the fact that you can literally put anybody's voice into any character, and that's how that works. But then there's the other side of it of like, well, how are people who are marginalized able to break into the industry if they're not able to actually play these characters? And that's a well, whole other topic. If you're looking for someone's specific into. voice, that doesn't matter. Like that to me, you're like, oh, I want that voice. Yeah, I want Darth Vader. Bring him here. You know, it's like, I don't really care as long man, as I get that voice. Like, right? Yeah, we, we, we don't need to dive into that. That's a large That's a totally another hole. subject. <laughs> Maybe for an evergreen episode. But yeah, please yeah. let us know what you think about the Ghost of Tsushima sales. Are you excited about the game? Have you picked it up yourself? Do you not care about really cool samurai in the style of Kurosawa? You if should. If you don't, turn off this show right now. Don't delete do the delete YouTube. Don't ever come back. Mark, mute him. <laughs> it's too late. It's too late. You can't contain this. Anyways, <laughs> let us know in the comments floating somewhere around my head. 
that are as devil horns because I don't care what you have to say. <laughs> Moving on to our final topic of the show. Um, this is a very interesting topic because I don't quite know how to go about discussing it. It's less of a discussion, more of a talking point. Yeah. Uh, but it's interesting nonetheless. So I'm going to talk for quite a bit, and then we can talk about some of the findings here. But it, there was a huge Nintendo Giga Leak, is what it's being referred to online, Giga Leak. which revealed a ton of information on SNES, N64, and DS games. Um, this has so much stuff that is continuing to come out of it. Like, whoever found it, they're literally got fans that are just continuing to build, 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 and figure out what's going on. So uh, here are some of the highlights from a Kotaku article as well as an IGN article. Both of them are very, very well done, so you're able to kind of see what is going on. Um, and by see, I mean me speak. Good, the Kotaku article won't load, so on to IGNs. Um, <laughs> so the, the leak itself was found... Um, I believe on 4chan of all places. Uh, there's a lot of people who are questioning its validity. However, the sheer amount of scope of granular detail and information is really hard to just get away from. And developers responsible have already confirmed a lot of validity in things. Mm -hmm. um, so it's pretty much guaranteed this is what's happening. So wow. Super Mario 64, it has been uh, found that Luigi was indeed in the game. Like, his model's there, he has lines, all of this stuff was set up for him. They just did not use those assets, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, there was information for a canceled Pokemon MMO. This MMO was going to be from the Game Boy Advance, in which you would plug it in with a peripheral to your PC for connectivity and play the game online. This was, I mean, 2004 is as early as when this project started. Okay. Um, so that, to me, was a super fascinating one. Because, again, that's something that people have been wanting for years. It feels to me like the Pokemon company doesn't want to go in that direction. So the fact that they haven't even prototyped it was fascinating. Can, can I say that, I, and I just looked this up, World of Warcraft, arguably one of the most notable um, MMOs in existence, was released on November 23rd, 2004. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want to compete. They're like, nope, it'll die. Jeez. Can't believe yeah, it, it looks dates like, that far back. Uh, the game would allow players to catch 30 Pokemon uh, in a game based on the Fire Red and Leaf Green installments. Connecting to the PC and going online would add a hatch system that used multiple conditions to determine what Pokemon eggs would appear, feature weather based on the region that they were connecting from, add online battle tournaments based on Pokemon Coliseum's code, and more. Could you? Uh, this is all done by a Chinese studio called IQ, which Nintendo owns majority of. Wow. Can you imagine if like Nintendo goes, you know what, we scrapped this project for this reason, but it's pretty much done, so we finished it, here it is. It's totally retro. You could use your old games, plug it up to your God. PC through this. People would buy the absolute shit out of it. Just because here's they're like, they... here's a part of history that never happened. You could buy it here. <laughs> here's why they won't. What I just read to you, if I'd taken out Pokemon Coliseum code, is literally Pokemon Go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they, you technically have a Pokemon MMO. You just don't want to play it. Uh, <laughs> The Zelda it's Ocarina of Time. It's not that much fun anymore, though. It, you were not there for GoFest this weekend, John. It was incredible. 31 shinies in two days. Uh, I'm on a roll. <laughs> I even hatched a shiny today, which made me laugh. So technically 33, or 32, I'm counting it. Um, key discoveries for Ocarina of Time center around uh, seemingly things that didn't make it to the final version of the game. Perhaps part of the, uh, the disk drive add-on for the N64. If yeah. you don't know, there was a the disk drive that's supposed to be attached to the bottom of the N64 to add processing power to it after it released. Uh, this includes a couple of versions of the Temple of Time that and they like have more lighting and torches and stuff. Uh, a couple of other things that are really cool and some new enemies that people have found. Uh, it also looks like they found a prototype of Yoshi's Island. Uh, seemingly at one point titled Super Mario Brothers 5 Yoshi's Island, the playable prototype features a different art style, UI, overworld menu, and placeholder music. Uh, Super Donkey. One of the oddest of the most fully fledged discoveries was Super Donkey, which has been an early, which may have been an early version of Super Mario World 2, which is the game that would become Yoshi's Island, uh, featuring an unknown character and uh, who could be a version of Mario rendered in Yoshi's Island style. That does make sense, actually, looking at the character design. 
Very cool. I thought a it looked weird Super, too. Yeah, uh, Prototype Super Mario Kart, uh, Mario Kart 64, which is really funny <laughs> because if you don't remember, Mario Kart on the SNES was was you know pixel graphics, but they used the um, what I can't remember the special tech uh, graphic rendering, but it doesn't matter. There's a rendering mode on SNES that they were very happy about. Uh, mode 7, that's what it is, Mode 7. And so it made it look 3D. This is actually like those same sprites in a 3D space. So it's just really funny to look at. Again, the IGN article has great pictures of it. A canceled Zelda 3 or Zelda 2 remake. It looks like they were taking the side-scrolling of Zelda 2. If you don't know, Zelda 1 was top-down. Zelda Link to the Past is also top down. In between, there was a side-scrolling game called Zelda 2, which involved some really tight, like, sword fighting mechanics. And so this was going to be possibly the third game or a remake going to the SNES, uh, which included some details like blood on the sword, which is kind of gruesome for a Zelda game. Yeah, about so you don't ever see blood in a Zelda game. Uh-huh. My favorite leak, because I love Pokemon so much, was the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl beta, which includes a bunch of files that have sprite versions of the various Pokemon that are not finalized. So some of them are really cool. So uh, a, a very popular Pokemon is Garchomp and its ev evolutionary line, which looks very different than its actual version in the game. It's actually got like a, a brown coloration to it, less spikes. It's a little bit more rounded. A couple of other things. Gabite, the middle evolution, looks nothing like it does in the core game. Um, but then there's the unfinished sprites, which are basically placeholders. So they look like really crude scribble drawings of what the Pokemon would look like in the game. It is hilarious to see something like Arceus, which is the Pokemon god, literally the creature that created all Pokemon and all beings on the planet. And it looks like a five-year-old just took a drawing and drew a dog. It's great. <laughs> it is so good. Um, there's also a Pilot Wings prototype. Uh, under the project heading of Dragonfly. It was a prototype that uh, eventually became Flight Simulator Pilot Wing. So Dragonfly was first. It was very much more sci-fi involving space and stuff. And then it moved to Pilot Wings, which is like old arcadey plane fighting. Uh, Super Mario World, the original version of Yoshi, which looks way more like a dinosaur, kind of like a Velociraptor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, which is really cool. Uh, you can also see that Bowser had legs at one point in time in Super Mario 2, which is interesting. Uh, and then, of course, Luigi flipping off the camera. Also fun. Um, <laughs> but there's some, there's some really cool stuff in here. I mean, the creators behind uh, the... Oh, my God. It is called... Do you think they were trying to do a thumbs up like that was the intent, but the thumb was like in the middle and somehow yes, he was just like yes. doing like this number here. I don't know. I, 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 I don't think anybody was like, we're just going to make Luigi flip off people. You'd be surprised if people have snuck some stuff into games before and they're like, why would you do that? I'd be like, I was bored. I forgot to take um, it out. <laughs> Star Fox 2, which actually never released until recently mm -hmm. when the uh, SNES classic was released there's a ton of information there where they have old character screens that include like a black woman in there and there you go it's nice classic right there but if you don't remember star fox is all anthropomorphized creatures so it's a little weird that there was a black woman is one i am dying over here sorry <laughs> <laughs> Um, tum tum tum. I know. I don't have it here. As one of the characters, they have all these other unused, like little character stuff. There's an entire text engine that one of the developers even commented on because he saw it on uh, Twitter because they they tagged him and he was like, "I have not seen this in almost 30 years. I wrote it in early C++ to teach myself the language more than anything else. Where the hell have the hackers got all this obscure data from?" Yeah. Like, the validity is there from the creators and the stuff they're finding is really incredible. If anything, just for historical context, right? Like games are such a weird medium because we never get the behind the scenes. We don't get the director's cut. We don't get the commentary or, or I shouldn't say never. We rarely do. Like it, like it is a privilege to get that kind of insight. And honestly, today we live in a golden age where you can literally reach out to Neil Druckmann on Twitter and go, holy shit, how'd you come up with this concept or this idea? And you actually have a chance of him responding. Yeah. Like, 
Never before have you had access to creators that you thoroughly enjoy like this. And so seeing this kind of stuff come out where you get to see the people reacting to Luigi being in N64 Mario, which is great. You get to see the beta enemies for the Mario 64 or like the, the black female pilot for Star Fox 2. And then having their creators comment on it is just such a cool feeling. And I... I really do ponder how this industry can be better about retaining this stuff because the instant reaction from a lot of people was, oh, how'd you get this? This is protected. You shouldn't see this. Yeah. It's like, well, listen, it's okay. It, it truly is okay, especially 30 years from now. Like, it's it's over. Yeah. It's done with. We, we've we gotten our version of Mario 64, and guess what? Some fan is going to take Luigi, and he's going to put it into the Mario 64 engine and make their own version of it. And how fucking cool <laughs> is that? Like, yeah. Don't get me wrong. You're, in this instance, I think it's more like, what other vulnerabilities are there? How did you get into yeah, this? Yeah, that's fair. I'm starting fair. to think that they were throwing away some old storage devices that they that's didn't need, before. and people got a hold of them, and then that was the data they were able to rip from it, or the data that they told people about. That is a hundred percent happened before, so I would not be surprised if that was the case. Um, but from a like, I I really do you know wonder how we can. We as consumers and also people involved in the industry just can be better about sharing this kind of stuff and finding a way to retain it. Like, like uh, John, you have on your coffee table behind you the Zelda Historia, like w the Hyrule Historia. It's I don't think it's the the green one. It's the brown it's one. It's the red I can't one. Remember what it, the red one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's the actual title of it? Because it has a specific title. Art and artifacts. Like. That book right there contains so much artwork. If you just flip to any random page. We'll be quick so Nintendo doesn't get us, but like, how cool is that to see these concept arts of these characters that eventually make it to screen? Here's an item list of different things that they're like, literally people just, you know, putting it on paper. This kind of stuff should be retained for posterity. And that's enough. Close it. That's 30 seconds. We don't need Nintendo giving us a copyright strike. Um, but seriously, like, that kind of stuff is fascinating to fans and also is historical, even from the minute, tiny little thing. Like, one of the craziest things in the world that so many developers from the 90s remember is when Prince of Persia's source code, like, leaked. The Prince of Persia, the old PC version of the game, old, right, in the 80s somewhere. Like, that leaked, and so many people were like, cool, I'm now going to tinker with this to figure out how to make a game. Because I want to make games, I don't know how to, here's a great example. Like, it's, this, this reluctance to let go is very fascinating to me. Because I feel like in doing so, you're really hiding stuff that isn't a blemish of any kind, nor really is it worth hiding. It's, if anything, it's worth celebrating. Like, look at the different parts of it. And truly, I think that if you showcase how iterative games are and how this process works, yeah. like, you, you, would, you would have some understanding to your consumer. Like, I think the one thing movies and television really get, and music as well, is, like, we all know we can't just act. Right, we know we can't just get in front of a camera and do something, and even if we do, we have the semblance of like, well, I've got my iPhone, or I've got my webcam, but that only gets you so far. You realize there's talent and there's stuff behind it, and some of that does come from the fact that directors, actors, they talk about the process, they talk about what it took, they go into detail about this thing. Right. Video game people are so afraid of that, like they're so afraid of talking about it. Up until recently, again, I would argue like The Last of Us Part Two is a great example because there's a 10-part podcast that Sony has released talking about the creation of that game. But that's a rarity. That's not the – like that's an exception to the rule. Yeah. Right. Well, and too, I mean a lot of the reason is, is especially with Nintendo is they're very much closed-minded about that we control every aspect. We yeah. don't want you knowing about that because we they may want to use it in the future. Like, hey, you know, we're going to use this idea that we had for Star Fox 2 in this new 3D Star Fox game that we're putting on Switch. And it would be this total surprise. And um, but it's... It's weird because I feel like it's almost like it's almost like their secret history that they like mm -hmm. and they don't want to necessarily share it with everyone else. Like it's kind of like being a part of like a fraternity, for example, and you guys know the ritual and no one else does. Like that's like the cool part of being yeah. in, the, in the know. It's not anything Stop. crazy. It's just cool. Put this put this little logo right in there. Just just keep that keep that reminder, I guess, of what this sounds like, I guess, to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, that's fair. 
it's uh it's it, an Apple it's logo certainly for those who are listening cool as like a history of like if you were to do like a history documentary and it come out like that that would be cool but something bad can also come from this something that didn't age well like um maybe there Song was of the south from disney say what oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that certainly was one thing that would not age well right now yeah um uh, for instance, say that uh, Luigi, instead of, you know, the middle finger, which we all find humorous now, maybe it would look like him and he was like, okay, yeah, you know what I mean? And now yeah. today that means something completely different than it did then. And they're like, but we didn't want that out there. Now, now everybody's going to be using Luigi as a white supremacist symbol. And they don't See, want that kind of like branding or behavior with their IP. Yeah, and I, I totally sympathize and do understand that. But I also think that if you get up front and you show these things and you have an openness for it, one, people are less likely to go and looking, right? Like, you're, you're going to get less of this type of thing. Uh, where no, people you're always going to have people try to bar you, down those You'll doors. have people looking, but you'll have less people, like, less of this big dump, right? Of like, right. oh, my God, look at all this shit found. So that when it comes down to the, like, Hey, Nintendo's revealed everything about Star Fox, uh, Mario 64, and this, but we found out that Luigi does the OK symbol. It's really not that big of a deal. Like, it, it just gets blown over. It's it's such a, a one-note story compared to this, where there's so much information and stuff to garner from it. Like, you can't help but talk about it. Like, again, I knew this wasn't going to be a very conversational thing, but I wanted to discuss it because it's so fascinating. And I mean, it is important to, like, look at. It is conversational because it's history. And we all like, like, the alternate history, what it could have been. Like, it's just a part of the fun of what video games are. They're a story, yeah. and some stories have variations. And to see what a story could be, you're like, wow, what are the possibilities? What else mm -hmm. could you have done? Was it going to be Mario and Luigi playing together? Or were they supposed to be taking turns like they did in the, S in the SNES in Super yeah. Mario World? Or was it going to be like he was actually, you know, an antagonist? Or was it like a toodaloo or, or uh, no, we're talking about that right yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, you know, or whatever. But it's, um, you know, the, the possibilities have grown in your mind from like, yeah. we're the nostalgic generation. And we love to think about the things that we love. And you give us an alternate universe to that thing that we love. And we're like, oh, my God, I can love it more. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, fair. But, uh, Brent, I, I like your uh, I like your, I guess, a, a example of like film of, of how, you know, like uh, the, you know, like video in general, you know, is like, this is how you do this. This is what the design process. This is my thought process as I go through this. And, and I like I, I, like, I agree that I hate that this is sort of a dump of everything at the last minute to say this is what the design process looked like. These are the unreleased things or the things that we didn't focus on at the time. I, you know, they don't need to come out right away necessarily you know, yeah, all the time, yeah, you know, yeah. but release them a year or two later or whatever. You suddenly drum up a ton of interest back in whatever it was at the time, you know, um, plus you really give some insight into to what kind of things, you know, you were actually thinking of or what kind of things you were working on as a company. Um, and John, I agree. Uh, history. I, I mean, a hundred percent. You know, like it's, especially for 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 people that where video games are are their their life. You know, like they they enjoy them, the the stories, they enjoy the interaction, that kind of thing. This is something that those people really want to to eat up and 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 really understand. I guess you know, like their developers and where their mindsets were at the time and what they were working on and what the company's you know progression was and what got us to where we are and what didn't get us to where we are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I like the idea. I, I, hell, how, how hard would it be to be, hey, five-year anniversary, boom, here's all this information about the game and, and yeah. a great way to also drum up sales. Like, <laughs> so. Hey, by the way, it's it's old, but it's not that old and it's so uh -huh. fun and it's on sale right now. Yep. Yep, there you go. Boom. So please let us know what you think about the Giga Leak. I like that, the Giga Leak. The, <laughs> the, I take one Nintendo's. every morning. <laughs> N Nintendo's fappening. Nintendo's <laughs> fappening. I like that too. Uh, please let us know in the comments floating uh, right over my Guinness mirror in the corner right there because you're able to see that now, now that we've cut the yeah, like a podcast little. in a different way. <laughs> and if you're not watching and you're listening, you don't get to leave comments anyways. Who cares? Move on <laughs> to what we like to call uh, a last call. Last, last call! call! You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. We're still missing the bell sound. It makes me so sad. I know. Oh. 
course, we are separated in our quarantine bunkers, but we are drinking our lovely beverages. I am having a rain vodka tonic here with some Pokemon lights. Somebody scream! Somebody uh, scream! As well as sipping on some slain Irish whiskey. I had this the other day. It is absolutely delicious. It's got a just a slight more of a bite than Jameson, which is why every now and then I like having it. Yeah. Agreed. What about you, John? Oh, uh, drinking the Hornet's Nest Hefeweizen, OMB. It's the yeah, last one. What did you buy? Okay. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, I don't even think I have ability to do things. <laughs> about as many bottles of Jameson as he has. Yeah. How about you? I need to go Patrick? refill, actually. <laughs> um, I'm actually drinking a little bit of uh, 1800 Ultimate Margarita Mango. Ooh, Ooh, that sounds really delicious. Yeah, drinking some on the rocks. Very good. Go. Um, it's a little sweet. Uh, after I've gone through, I think this is my third cup now, or I'm into my third cup here. It's, it's, like it's starting to get to me. <laughs> he also has to pee really, really badly. Of course, you can join us on our Discord to have multiple discussions. Uh, we actually had a great discussion this week going back and forth on... Um, what was it? Sony's plans uh, for the future, whether or not something was exclusive, going over what Xbox had. It was actually a really cool discussion between Tumbleweed, Jaeger, myself, and anybody else who's willing to come in, as well as Griffin. Uh, if you hop onto the Discord, you will find some fast friends real quick. Like, mm -hmm. again, anybody you want to talk to or play games with, I guarantee you will find someone there. We have over 150 members now. It is steadily growing. Please come and join us. Uh, we also have a happy hour channel that is open, so that way you guys can come and talk to us there mm -hmm. if you want to target us specifically. We got PC and com console gamers, so do not worry. Yep. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, for our weekly reading this week, uh, this is actually what John was uh, alluding to in his topic. Uh, it is an article from Polygon called Ghost of Tsushima Kurosawa and the Political Myth of the Samurai. It is a very interesting look at the game as well as Kurosawa films and how the samurai has become this kind of entity that is being used for conservative politics in Japan as well as kind of romanticized similar to the knight uh, of chivalrous oh, knight of... Yeah, like the European myth, and how that does not really portray the historical context of the samurai. You should check it out. It's worth worth looking to, especially if you're playing Ghost of Tsushima. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have a PSA for anybody who owns a PlayStation Portable handheld. I do, which is why I'm putting it out there. Uh, not a PSP Go, but a PSP. Oh, really? Oh, okay, okay. Yes, <laughs> uh, because it turns out that some of their batteries are starting to swell. Users were actually on Twitter early this morning oh. discussing the fact that the batteries were swelling and even exploding in some cases. Ooh. Now, when I talk about exploding, it's a battery explosion, so it's self-contained within the PSP itself, but still you should... still fire and smoke and all that stuff. It's still a thermal runaway on a lithium mm. battery. Yeah. Battery acid is the big thing, right? So you want to make sure that you're not eroding anything inside that PSP if you're trying to maintain it. Check put it in between your mattress batteries. and your box springs. Absolutely. That's where I put mine. Uh, for some cool-ass shit this week, there's three things I thought were great. Uh, one of which is you can play a handful of games in Minecraft now, including Doom. <laughs> that's How awesome. How fucking cool is that? Minecraft just continues to be this weird anomaly of a game that will forever live. <laughs> I doubt it'll ever go away. It'll probably take over our planet one that's what, day. That's what happens uh, when the mod community gets a hold of it. Uh-huh. Uh, speaking of mods, someone has created a brand new Zelda game using the N64 assets in the Ocarina of Time engine. It's called cool. The Legend of Zelda, The Missing Link. The trailer is available. There's a Kotaku article talking about it. I believe it should be coming out soon. It is very, very cool. Check it out. All I'm saying is Nintendo had a missed opportunity with that name. Agreed. Just put that uh, and finally, uh, we are in the end of July going into August. We, are, of course, are adults, and this show is somewhat aimed at people who are a little bit more mature, hence why we drink and talk about what we drink while we discuss the news of the week. So that means it is almost time for you to vote. I do not care about your personal politics unless you would like to discuss it on the Discord, because I love having conversation. Even if we disagree, it doesn't yep. mean we can't have civil discourse. Or in the comments uh, below. How, or in the comments floating right around my microphone space. Mm -hmm. um, but the important thing is that you are ready, registered, and prepared to vote. Uh, 
Uh, you may think it's a waste of time, but it is still your right to do however you want. It is also what little power you have over our government. And I don't mean our federal government, I mean our government in general, local, federal, mm -hmm. everything in between, state. So you should go, there's www.gamers.vote is the link. It is in our Google Doc. You could find it real, real quick. I might even put it in our description just to make it even easier to find. Uh, this will give you access to ensure that you are registered, that you can sign up for things, including mail-in ballot if you are still concerned about the pandemic, which I believe you should, but if which not- Which you have to your order your mail-in ballot early. Correct, which is why you should also make sure that you are registered early and get everything prepared right now. So yep. go ahead, gamers.vote, super easy. Uh, please, please check it out. Uh, it is definitely the year for it. Not simply because we have our own feelings on Trump, but literally 2020 has been a garbage truck on fire. If you're gonna exude any power, you should yeah. do it this year. Uh, finally, it's time for a question of the week. Uh, so what was the last big cultural hot topic that you were never interested in until you were? So I feel like this is kind of a semblance of a question I've asked before, but I was thinking about this quite a bit as I was re-watching episodes of Seinfeld, because that is my answer. Seinfeld is one that I was too young at the time to really get, uh, and even up to this point, just kind of brushed it off. Like I just, it was on Hulu for years. I just refused to kind of look at it, despite the fact that it, quite honestly, is my type of humor, which John means it's your type of humor too. Um, <laughs> But having dove into it and watched it once and on my second watch through now, I am so happy I dove on that. Like it is, it is a show about terrible human beings. It is perfect for that. That's one of Brent's like things. He loves shows on terrible human beings like uh, Succession, uh -huh, uh, yeah. Empire, uh, Boardwalk Empire, <laughs> uh, so Peaky Blinders. I would argue the difference between those shows and Seinfeld is that Seinfeld is a satirical terrible, right? Like, it's very obvious that yeah. they know they're terrible, but it's four friends who are all terrible people, and they're like, well, I got nobody else, so the four of us can just be together. <laughs> Let's live through life together. <laughs> my, my example, and I'll be real quick about this, is I just rewatched the episode of... Uh, where George is trying to get new glasses, and while he's trying to get new glasses, a, a guy walks into the glasses shop with his dog. The dog bites Elaine. And so she is literally on the floor, like she has a dog bite. And George walks in, or is talking to Jerry about the fact that he just saw his girlfriend making out with his cousin. And Jerry's like, okay, like one second, one second. George, what is it? What's going on? And Elaine's like, I need to go to the hospital. And Jerry's just like, we'll get there. Give me one second. What are you talking about, George? What happened? Like, just completely <laughs> oblivious to any of her problems because it's about him. And that is a perfect example of the show. And it's great. I love it personally, but. I understand. I understand. So is, is Seinfeld your cultural hot topic there? Or? That is my cultural touch point. That's why I talked about it for <laughs> two minutes. <laughs> it really suck if that was not the case. <laughs> That's a, I mean, it's a, it's a good question because I've never been one to like jump on the bandwagon on a lot of stuff. Uh, I would say initially, I would say, I don't know. Like, like I, I like I, everything so, I think of, I usually get in on it when I happen to come across it. Like it's. Like, I usually I'm, dive in and I like it or I don't. Like, there's not, like, a whole lot where I was like, eh, I'll come back to it later. And then I ended up, like, adoring a series. Like, The Last of Us is one I was gonna that say, uh, I, the closest thing I could come to where I was like, you know what? I never played The Last of Us 1. I watched Brent play so much of it. I knew everything. I, you know, saw what was going on. And, I got the hard copy. You can borrow it. Uh, I, yeah, I'm sure I could. I can't right now. I got... Shushi Midipa. So, and coming to, to uh, The Last of Us 2, it was a, like, by the end of it, like, I totally understand where people were coming from, where they were super conflicted. Uh, I didn't know how to process the game for days. Like, yeah. I had so many emotions up front where I was, like, kind of angry, confused, and I just wanted to be, like, not nitpicky, but just, like, why do they do it that way? Like, I wanted to figure it out. And that was really uh, a lot of, to me, a lot of the fun on uh, deciding what it meant to me and what they were trying to say and what that relates to the world. And, uh, you know, I could totally appreciate 
that 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 part of the story at the very least. But I mean, that, that's the closest thing I come to. <laughs> okay. What about you, Marcus? Um. Well, so you're talking about things that you were never interested in until you were like so. Uh, yeah, I, I like I you, you kind of got me on this thought process anyway when you mentioned that you were watching Seinfeld. So I told like I had mentioned previously anyway that uh, the girlfriend and I had been watching Fresh Prince of Bel Air, mm-hmm. um, and uh, especially you know watching it through the 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 BLM movement uh, updates that have just happened recently and uh, whatnot. It really rang true in in certain senses there. There are some uh-huh. episodes that were uh, that were kind of weird there, but like, I've always had a general interest in, in Fresh Prince. Um, Friends, like the episode something... where they got pulled over. Yes, exactly. Like where, that one. Where oh. Will is just straight assuming we're going to get arrested because it's two black dudes in a Mercedes. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. that. That's exactly what's going to happen. He's yeah, like, no, we're thing. going to jail, and he's like, why? We didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> yeah. And, and Carlton continues to say things that, you know, sound suspicious, of course. So, um, no, um, um, actually, I'd say a one that happened a while back that I wa- uh, watched, um, I don't know, four years ago or something like that. I finally got all the way through it was um, How I Met Your Mother. Oh, so I was about to say the same thing because, well, I'll. Sorry, I didn't so, mean to <laughs> <laughs> so I I had no interest in it. I had no idea what it was at the time. Um, didn't really like pay attention to what it was. I just heard the quotes coming out. I kept seeing memes come out about Barney, and uh, it, it you know it was great because the show was blowing up at the time. Uh, but I had zero interest in it until literally the show ended, and then I finally binge watched the entire thing from beginning to end because I was like. All right, well, it's on here, you know, it's whatever, you know, why, why not, you know? Um, and I love that series now. I've, <laughs> I've watched the entire thing through three times from Hot beginning damn, to you. end. Beginning to end, I've watched every episode three times. I, you can avoid the last season. Everyone can yes. just avoid the last season like it's nothing and yep. just forget it ever existed. It didn't but, happen, mm-hmm. huh? Hoo-hoo. I would argue you could probably series. watch the last season up to the final episode. Just don't watch the final okay. episode. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I'm good there with you that. Go. Yeah. Um, I actually agree with that because I sat at Brent's house and we literally spent all day watching it. And yeah. I was like, <laughs> this isn't a good show. I, I was not Ooh. interested in that either until I started watching it. I don't know why I didn't think about this. You guys are going to you guys are gonna, are gonna probably hate me for this one a little bit because everyone kind of did at the time. Game of Thrones. Yeah, <laughs> I paid zero attention to Game of Thrones for the first yeah. five seasons, four seasons, and then oh, binge right. watched to catch up. No, no, no. It was season seven that I caught up. First six seasons, I basically just <laughs> avoided <laughs> and never paid attention to. But then we binge watched six seasons to catch up into season seven using HBO Now. It's actually funny you mentioned Game of Thrones because I was actually thinking of the books that I wasn't like. I didn't like Brian kept telling us, you got to read these books. You got to read these books. And I know Brent was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I'm not reading the giant freaking story towers of novels. And then uh, the <laughs> Game of Thrones, uh, Game of Thrones show came out. I'm like, oh, we'll hit that up. And then we fell in love with it. And it was like our end all be all conversations forever and ever and ever. <laughs> so so I, I want to fix that story just a little bit, because how it worked out is Brian was like, you have to read these books. You have to read these books. You have to read these books. And it wasn't that I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, I'll get to it when I get to it. And a year later, before the show, I was like, oh, I heard the show's coming out. I'm going to have to read this book. So I got the audio book. And I was like, dude, this book is incredible. You should read this. And Brian's like, I literally told you about Like, what do you mean? I should read it. I told you about this book already. And I was like, oh, that's what you were talking about. Yeah, that's because Brent wasn't listening to him. He was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And it was no, I'll get to it. I don't even remember. <laughs> but please let us know what is the last big cultural hot topic that you never were interested in until you were in the comments or on our discord however you feel comfortable talking to us and until next time cheers cheers, cheers. Boom.